In this video, the regional equivalent network reduction method is demonstrated using the Texas grid model. Study case 8.2 should be activated. The fundamentals of network reduction are explained in a video based on the standard transmission system example. Here, we are focusing on network reductions carried out using the regional equivalent method, which is aimed at system operators who are primarily interested in their own operational area, but wish to retain a nominal representation of other networks interconnected with their own. In this case, we are most interested in the far west grid, and wish to carry out a network reduction on these four grids. The other grids, which are more closely connected, will be retained. Let us look at the steps in this process. The regional equivalent method allows each adjacent area to be represented by a single node. At each node the demand of the group is represented by one or more load objects and the generation by one or more synchronous machines, depending on the options selected. The advantage of this modeling is that the demand and generation can later be adjusted as required. Between each node, and from the nodes to the rest of the network, equivalent impedances are created, together with phase shifters for managing the flows. This network reduction part of the process is followed by an optimization step, where the values of the equivalent impedances are optimized, to ensure that the interregion flows match the original flows as closely as possible. The network reduction command is found in the additional functions toolbox. We can see that it is set up to use the regional equivalent method, and the four grids have been selected for reduction. More options are found on the regional equivalent page. On the aggregation tab, there are settings which allow the user some flexibility in terms of the load and generator objects to be created. On the impedance identification tab, we find the settings which control the optimization process for the impedance values. Note that this process makes use of the standard system parameter identification function. An important input into the process is the user supplied weighting factors. In this study case, we are particularly interested in the far west grid, and so we have given a high weighting to the interchanges between this and the adjacent grids, for which boundary objects are used. Lower weighting factors are given to the flows within the retained grids. These weighting factors are used to determine which flows are most important when optimizing the impedances. The network reduction can now be executed. A new study case is created, and a network variation, which records all the changes. Let us look in the output window. After the initial load flow, the newly created elements are listed. The output from the optimization process follows. And finally, we see the validation of the reduced network. Despite some small flow differences at these boundary nodes, we see that the interchanges of greatest interest are very accurately represented.